He must be born again from above, Jesus says mysteriously to Nicodemus, that would-be disciple. Nicodemus comes in secret, wanting a small introduction to Jesus' ministry, and instead gives a full-bodied response. To enter God's life with me, you must be born anew from above. We have heard this nighttime conversation enough times that we think we know its meaning. A nod to a spiritual birth, a dramatic confession of belief, an instantaneous conversion. Such set categories keep us, like Nicodemus, at a distance from Jesus, dismissing the call into God's life with objections. You cannot enter a womb a second time. That type of conversion is not quite for me. And yet the statement stands, you must be born again from above. And to unpack it today, I invite you into some homiletical imagining. The parole board has met. The call comes to the guard stationed outside your prison cell. It has been 25 years, but the sentence has been suspended. And in a few hours, you will walk out the door free. Jail time has hardened you. The scars on your skin prove it. But as you change from prison garb into t-shirt and jeans, you can't stop the tears from leaking down your cheeks, nor the joy that fills your heart as the sunshine soaks your face. Whatever the past, today is a new day, a new start, and you are vulnerable, hopeful, and frightened all at once to see again the world beyond the barbed fence. You must be born again, says Jesus, to a richly robed, educated leader, a man we might imagine imprisoned by his fears, fears that someone will learn of this nighttime visit. Someone might question his role or success. The invitation into freedom by Christ is glorious and terrifying, coming into a brand new life. The hour is late, your work is not finished. There are piles to read, emails to answer, forms to sign, schedules to review. You are exhausted from the endless days in which the tasks are bigger than your ability to meet them and the treadmill of life leaves you feeling less than human. But on this night, for whatever reason, you stop, push away from the table, walk out on the porch, and listen as the wind whirls in the distance. You let the cool breeze tickle the hairs upon your arm, the smell of the dew in the grass Awaken your senses. You think about the power in the cosmos and how, if you let it, it could carry you along as you ride the wind with its twists, turns, bumps, and climbs. Ride it into a life where each breath is a deep one, where each meal is shared at an open table not eaten hurriedly, 
in the car, a life where compassion minds the gap of isolation and gentleness overtakes our anger. To be by my side, says Jesus, you must be born again from above, born onto the wind that is God's spirit, that blows through our cynicism, blows past our complacency, and gives us new life. After Jesus finishes speaking, Nicodemus walks away. Back into the night shadows, unable to embrace the start over, unwilling to risk where the spirit moves. Three years later, the new of Jesus' life will appear extinguished. Jesus crucified as the cost of his witness. Scripture does not record Nicodemus present at the cross. But I suspect wherever he was, he was close by. That he heard the wind howl. The women and one disciple weeping at the base the running footsteps of others who scatter in fear. Maybe Nicodemus saw with eyes born of that new life the risk and the pain and the truth of a life born again from above. Clearly he saw something because he came later that day with a supply of myrrh and alum to join Joseph and tending for Jesus' body. And somehow, in all the paradox that is God, he saw the kingdom in its gloriousness, in the brokenness of Jesus. For the kingdom comes when love keeps offering itself again and again into the world's sin sickness. As faithful followers of Jesus, we too can be born anew from above, again and again propelled by the Spirit to those stuck on the treadmill of a harsh life born by the Spirit towards a God who loves the whole world, and he wants us to breathe deeply of Jesus' new life, and then release it like a blessing to those around us. Amen.